Okay, welcome back to the workshop. So in the last episode, you saw me make this DRO system here. Now I've been using it a little bit to make the next part that I'll show you in a moment. Yeah, it's really handy to have this kind of lock here, the depth stop, and then have a readout finally back on the quill. Okay, so in this episode, we're going to finally make it a little bit safer uh, and make the cover that goes on there. So I thought about a couple of different ways of doing it. I was gonna make the side solid out of 10 millimeter aluminium, and then I'd only have to uh, bend a sort of sheet of aluminium as well to give a nice radius and then just bolt it in at various intervals. That would have been reasonably straightforward. Um, I went to look at the tooling plate that I like to use, and I think just for those two sides, so sort of about that sort of size back to there, that sort of size like that on each side, 10 millimeters thick. Um, I think it came in at 25 pounds, and then you had to add that, and then the 15 pound delivery. So it came to 50 pounds just for two little pieces like that. And I thought, I think that's getting a little bit too pricey. So. Thought about, thought about other options. Um, I could have made it out of sheet aluminium, but then, um, you know, make it it's kind of a folded shape. Uh, but then this seam down here, it was not gonna be easy to do that. My welder only welds steel. I don't have an aluminium capable TIG welder. Yeah, I could have put some tabs on it and then uh, riveted it together, but that doesn't look very nice, I don't think. So I think what I finally decided to do, um, I ordered some sheet steel. I'm gonna make the whole thing out of sheet steel so it'll be folded and then I'll gently tack this final seam down here, around here, um, and then grind it back and try and make it look nice, and then we can just paint it up, and hopefully that'll do the job. Now, I think the sheet steel for that, 500 by 500, so enough to make this and plenty spare, I think came to about 16 pounds delivered, so way cheaper than the aluminium solution. A bit more work, perhaps, but I think it's still gonna look nice. So, let's get on with that. Okay, so here it is complete cleaned up so we've got our two clearance holes there that's what bolts it down onto the top of the machine and then we've got our uh, m5 thread there so the cover comes down there'll be a little sort of thumb screw on there so you can undo that and quickly change the belts if you want to right so let's go and fit this onto the machine all right it's a bit awkward to film up here so i'm just gonna do it handheld see it helps me see what i'm doing as well that side. Okay, that's a little better shot of it there. So you can see that's bolted down. Then there's an M5 screw there. It'll be a little thumb lock screw. So you just loosen that, take the cover off. Should you need to change the belts, but I think it'll probably stay there most of the time. Seems to be plenty of torque for most of the things I've done anyway. All right, that's another one finished. Okay, so to make this uh, belt cover, we need to machine this on the CNC machine. So there's a couple of things we'll do here. In the cam, I've added some little score lines. So we'll use a V-cutter just to break the surface, just so we know where we've got to fold. Um, so these two edges will be fold down like that. And then there'll be a fold line there. And then that part there has got to be bent round to match that radius. And then this flat bit here will be close to that. So basically then I'll end up just tack welding all the way along there and along that seam as well. Um, and then just grinding that back and making it smooth and that should give us a nice rounded effect at the front and then we've got a little fixing there so there'll be a screw that holds that in place and at the back here these are cut out so you'll have your fixings you'll just loosen them slightly and then the whole cover should be able to slide out once you've taken that one off so that's the idea anyway so uh, let's get this set up on the CNC machine and get it cut out Okay, so the way I've decided to do this one is I've got the one millimeter mild steel sheet. It's clamped down onto this MDF spoil board underneath. Um, I think that'll do for what we got here. 
I mean, this is not the ideal machine to uh, be cutting this out. You could use a CNC plasma. Yeah, that would be nice, but I don't have one of those. Yeah, but you could make one. Don't give me ideas. Let's just stay on topic. Right, so we've got a three millimeter end mill in here, and uh, we'll get the the zeroed off, and then we'll carefully, um, maybe quarter. I can't remember what I did in the cam. Quarter, half millimeter at a time. Go around, cut it out. Um, I left some tabs in it as well, and then we'll just clean the whole thing up, and then we'll have our net shape done, and then it's ready to do the bending. So let's touch off, and then we'll get started. So after we've finished cutting and then cut away all the tabs and then giving it a nice clean up around the edges, uh, we're left with this. So obviously we've got to fold this now into our shape. So just to make sure, because I don't really want to cut this out again, just to make sure I've got the lines correct, particularly for the curve, um, I made this. So I basically made this as a paper template, cut it all out, and then you can see I've just, just very crudely uh, taped it together but the key thing I wanted to understand was uh, where I drew those lines on there are those do those lines intersect and yes they do so that's the center of that that curve that radius at the front uh, it starts there and then it finishes there and everything lines up nicely as you can see it's gonna end up looking a bit like that uh, now because of the size of the cutter there will be a little bit of a uh, sort of a pocket there I think you can see there a little bit there but that's fine I'll either fill it with weld or I may just just to make it look nice, just stop the weld short and then leave that little hole because it will look sort of purposeful because that's where the plates will come together. Um, and then the other, only other thing, yeah, there'll be that, that hole at the front there, which is that one, which is what kind of holds it in place. And then I haven't cut those out, but there's little slots at the back. So the whole thing kind of slots onto screws that are already there that are only partly in place and then you just secure it at the front here. So. That is our belt cover in paper. So what we need to do now is just mark these lines um, on here. So we'll get it set up on the surface plate over here, on my best attempt at surface plate. And then we'll put the little fixture together to do the air bend for this radius. Okay, so now I need to make that bend in the cover plate. So I need to make a fixture. So I've got a few things here. I think I can use that as the main base for it. And then in terms of the press tool itself, that's 50 millimeters diameter, which is basically what the drawing called for. And then I've got this kind of bar in the middle. This will be to it'll be a lot shorter than this. This will be to actually screw down and do the pressing. And then I've got a few bits and pieces like this which will end up being the blocks at the sides somehow I haven't quite figured it out yet um, maybe we'll just use one I don't know something like that and these will be the right distance apart and then the sheet will lay on there get it all lined up and then this will come in uh, get that lined up as well and then we'll basically just slowly screw that down till we've got uh, it's called an air bend so basically we'll have a nice 90 degree bend but with this radius here so that's the basic plan so I'll get this marked out, get it all worked out, machined, drilled, tapped, everything, and then we'll bring it back when it's done and we can put that bend on.
Okay, so now we can move on to the press tool. So you probably saw me making some of these bits earlier in the video. So we've got the base plate here. We've got the sort of blocks that it stands off. Uh, this will actually be uh, sort of the pipe or the bar, I guess, that does the clamping. Um, but that will go inside. Well, the plan was to put it inside this, which is um, down to 50 millimeters, which is, if you look on the drawing, oh, I've got it on this. Okay, I've got it on this drawing, it's on one of the earlier ones, but um, that's to get this, yeah, get this piece to have that curve on it. Now that's got a radius of 50 millimeters, and this pipe is, yeah, 50. However, Hopefully you've spotted my error, which is uh, that's got a diameter of 50 and we need a radius of 50. So luckily I caught my mistake in time and we have this, which I ordered in, which is a diameter of 100, or oh, it's four inch, so it's 100 and something, 100 point something, 0.3 I think. Um, yeah, so this is the correct uh, size we need now. So this will be part of the press tool. So I'll get it out of here, clean it up, uh, and then we'll get this together and then you can see what it's gonna look like. Okay, so we've got our fixture put together. So these are the two pieces that will support it at the side. And then we've got two threads in here that we'll use to pull it down. And the gap between there is a little bit wider. So that should allow me to overbend it. And I think I've calculated seven and a half millimeters from that edge to that edge and the same on that one. So we'll get that centralized. I'll just give you a rough idea for now. So that goes on there. Um, and then here's our tube with the correct diameter. It's 100 millimeters. And then I've basically marked a line that's halfway up, which is that one, and then followed it round, round the corner. So if you can see it uh, just there and round the corner onto that side. No, the light's not very good. But anyway, basically that's what I've then got to do, because this is a little bit narrower. Um, and then that allows me space just to line that up there. And then I do the same on the other side. And then with that lined up, get our bar through there so that should pretty much self centralize and then we got our, our two bolts so we're going to pull that down so that's the basic idea so I'll I'll double, triple check that's all okay, and then we'll start winding these down. So just before I go and do that for real, I'm just gonna take it apart and just put some tape on the edges underneath here, and that should reduce the marring on here. And then we'll go for the bend. Okay, so finally got a setup I'm pretty happy with. Uh, these two blocks down here, these are just to provide something for this to push up against, because um, once I've got it lined up, it was awkward to hold it in place and get everything else clamped in. So they're just kind of placeholders and as soon as it starts to get the bend going obviously they'll be they'll stop this moving into the right place so those will come out and the same at the back here so basically those two are just to lightly hold this in the correct place make sure it's lined up down there uh, the other change i've made here is i did have um, the bolts in here they were a bit short and i was going to bottom out anyway would have had to put them put some spaces in and mess around with that so i'm going to try something i did last time I, and I bent some sheet like this, just use the clamps, put one at each end like that, uh, down there, and I'll just evenly try and apply that pressure onto there, and that should push it round. And then just to make sure I'm going down straight and not at an angle, I've got my uh, angle measurement device there, it's just magnetic, so it's just clipped on the back there. Right, so we'll get it going, and as soon as it starts to form the first bit of that bend, we'll take this, this, and the other one out of the way, and then hopefully it will stay on that line and push it all the way down. So 
So as you can see, I changed the setup back to these bolts and just put these spacers on. So I think that's gonna be okay. We'll start to get a little bit close soon. So we'll just have to see how that goes. But as you can see, we start to put the fold on now. So I've taken all the guides away so it can sort of form naturally if you like. All right, we'll keep going. Okay, I don't think we're quite there yet, but we can use this just to check, so. I'll zero it on there, and then. At 78, let's call it. In fact, let's leave that there, because I'm keeping these in sync by turning them together. Uh, obviously we just need to keep going backwards and forwards because if that gets to 90 this will have gone more, yeah, you, you know what I mean. Right, let's go a bit more then. Half a turn. That's gone to 80. So zero it there, so will that be 83? Yeah, okay. I'll go to 85 perhaps. Let's wind it back out. Right, let's see. Let's see what we got. Zero. So there's no tension on it now. I've been playing around a little bit and you can see we've got that zero there and pretty close. Yeah, 89.9, right, so we'll go with that. We'll take it out. Any fine tuning we'll do once we've folded the sides up. Okay, now we're gonna put the bends on the edges. Now, clearly we've got a bit of a problem here. I need a box and pan folder, but I don't have one of those and they're quite expensive. So I just thought I'd just have a go, just see how well I could set this up. I looked at a few other arrangements, you know, having this much further away, but these are too short. And uh, So I think what I'll do, um, I've got it lined up on the edge here. We'll bend it so far and then we'll run out of travel on this. Um, maybe, because it's such a short piece, once I've established the bend, I might be able to just do it in the vise, you know, between some blocks of steel or something like that. Um, I think that's best I can do for now. Right, we'll use the angle gauge as before, give us a rough idea. And here we go. Yeah, we're going to struggle just here. It's hitting already. I thought I might get a little bit further. So that's one idea. Or maybe now I've got the bend started, I can do the rest in the vise. Hmm. Maybe we'll try that. Right, so I've got it set up in the vise. I've got that in line with the crease there. And then I've just been using this block on the back. This is one millimetre steel, so I've been actually able to just to manually just bend it down. I could hit it. But as you can see, I can bend it. And it's creasing on that line, so I think this is going to work. Obviously a box pan folder would be ideal. I don't have one. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to just tap those in. Do the other side and then bring it back. 
Okay, so I've just offered it up before I uh, tack weld it just to see where we're at. And it just clears the motor at the top there, and then it slides into that little sort of finger cut out there so I can loosen that slightly and pull this out. I need to change the belt speed. It's quite nicely on, along there, but you can see just at the front here, fits around there, and then I'm obviously just going to have to just walk this in, and it may end up just going a little bit below, so I'll probably just grind that to suit just to get that to fit. But you know, considering the tools I've got, that's not too bad, it's got to be pretty close. And um, the other side is pretty similar. Yeah, just needs pulling in a bit, and then the, but otherwise it seats quite nicely and it looks like it's going to go. Right, so I think, I'm just wondering whether just to actually tack it, I'll just protect these with some sheets and some uh, fireproof mats and then maybe just tack it a little bit up there, see if I can push it in or clamp it in and just tack it in a few places. That's probably going to work because I know where it's got to be, I know it's got to be here and it's kind of in the right place. Maybe use this as a template to make it. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Let's set the welder up around here and we'll just bring it into the correct shape. Okay, before we weld that, we'll just swap this out because this has got 0.8 millimeter wire in it. We'll drop it down, I've got some 0.6. So we just open this up here. Take off the little pressure wheel there and then <laughs> The bit that everybody dreads, just got to be careful, feed it back. Um, I've clipped the end clean off the end of the torch, so it was a nice clean cut, so that should come back without damaging the liner. And you've got to grab it when it comes back, should see it there. And then we'll put it through this hole and bend it, so hopefully it holds it in place. Oop, nearly, that was close. When I bought this off Artec, they, I think they sent me one for free actually. They sent me this, one of these was free anyway. This is the 0.8 as you can see. Uh, this is the wire I've been using. So I'll pop that, there's the spec. Pop that back in there. Point six, which is that spec there. Oh. Stuck with a point eight for the past year or two, so I haven't actually put this one on yet, as you can see. Thank you. So we'll get this opened up, put it on there, and then we'll bring it back. Okay, so we swapped over to the 0.6mm diameter wire um, and then on this model we have to change this little roll around, it's got a 0.8 and a 0.6mm groove just on the feed wheel, so you just take this off, turn this around and put that through there. Um, I haven't changed the tension, we'll just uh, give that a, a power up in a minute and just see if that's okay, I might need to maybe add a little bit more because it's a bit thinner, but we'll see how we go. So let's feed that through to the torch, so I'll switch on. gas on and are ready to go. Right so I'm going to try just tacking it into position because this is kind of like a pattern for it so it, it tells it exactly where it's got to sit. Um, so I could just tack it in a couple of places, uh, maybe try just pushing it in you know and then bringing it into size. I think what's happened is as I've um, pressed it um, to form this shape 
it's probably stretched it slightly and it's a little bit maybe half millimeter too long there and it's just making it flare out a little bit but you know that's okay that's uh that's what we got that's the tools we got so as you can see we've got the green filter so if i just hit the test yeah that's what should happen when the spark or the arc starts up we've got the earth clamp up there hopefully it'll make a good earth through that bolt and then we'll just bring the torch in and just dab it a few places and same the other side and then i'll see what i'm going to do from there i may end up taking it off then or maybe i have to push it in place right let's get going So after running a few tacks down there, that's what we've got. So I think I'll just leave that bit at the top, just where uh, there's the hole there, just to allow it to follow that form. And then you've got the same on the other side, just stitched in. So we'll take this off, grind it back and see what we've got. Um, if we've got any little holes, I may fill them in with weld or I may just leave it and just uh, fill it. And then we'll prime it and get it ready for paint. So yeah. Okay, so it's starting to clean up quite nicely. You can see it's pretty continuous through here, but there are obviously, as expected, little holes through here. Uh, but it's starting to come together now. Uh, I've done the same on the other side. So I think what I'm going to do is take this out. In fact, I might be able to do it here. I might have to rearrange. Yeah, probably have to rearrange how I'm going to fasten it in the vise. But anyway, um, I think what I'll do is just um, sort of do little stitch welds on the inside. And then that will fill in any holes and then I can, anything that sticks through, I can blend it in nicely. So I think we'll stitch weld this side and stitch weld this inside one as well. Um, and we'll just do it in short runs just to avoid too much heat and too much distortion or blasting through. And let's see how we get on. Right, so I'll set it up for that and then we'll get welding. Yeah, well this is where I've got to with just uh, grinding, sanding, there's some tiny, tiny little pits just there and there's like a little crack just through there, obviously when you get to the end that's quite hard to weld. So I'll see, I might put a piece of packer against that and then see if I can backfill that. So that side maybe could do a little bit more work, but on the other side, I think there's a tiny little hole just there, otherwise, yeah, that's perfect. Right, I'll carry on working on this and then we'll get it cleaned up, ready for painting. And after a bit of weld and grind and clean up, there we got that. I decided to fill that hole in at the top in the end, somewhere, somewhere around here, wherever it was. Um, and then the motor was a little bit close and I thought, you know, when you're going to move it back and forwards, the belt tension, if it catches on this, it's going to get annoying. So I just opened it up, folded that sort of tab down a bit there. And it's got clearance at the back. So there we go. Uh, I could show you the inside. Yeah, not, I can't really get the uh, angle grinding there to clean those up, but yeah, it's on the inside, so 
it's just what it is. It did its job, it's filled in. So we've got a nice fillet through here, nice penetration through, and then we're able just to bring it back, bring the profile back. Right, so I've cleaned it off with some white spirit. So let's get it set up and we'll spray it with this Rustoleum Metallic. We've got a little bit left. And then we'll let that dry and then I'll bring you back when that's done and we'll offer it up onto the machine and uh, that should be our little belt co cover done. Right, back in a minute. So now the paint's dry, we've got that. Which looks pretty good. I'm very happy with that. Um, I'll just put a dab on the inside as well. Not that that's super critical. And there we go. So let's go and offer it up onto the machine. This might get a little bit awkward to film up there, but we'll do our best. So I've got the two little side screws already in, so they should guide us. And the front one is not in at the moment. Put that in last. One at the front. Okay, so there we have it. So I think with the tools I've got and uh, materials and so on, I'm pretty pleased with that. Now, it won't come off that often because we've got the inverter drive going to the three-phase motor so it's only if I want to step between kind of the high and the low and I've been using it quite a bit now and I haven't had to change the belt so you know there's a good chance this will never actually come off except for maintenance or changing the belt you know when it wears out whatever very very pleased that's another big job completed and a bit safer as well okay I think we'll finish the video there um, that turned out to be quite a lot of work but you know it turned out pretty well in the end and uh, pretty pleased with it so as always thank you very much for watching um, give a thumbs up if you liked it feel free to subscribe and see you on the next one <laughs>